So, you know, as a professor in the Department of Government um, and as a Jesuit here, I had a real interest in this topic. Um, it's part of our Jesuit history, uh, the legacy we have in these United States of both being great educators, but being tied up in the economy of this country. Um, a country that was born really on this, uh, as people have said, original sin. Um, and to confront that and to feel it with all the feeling that one has around one's own family. Because that's what it is to, to be a Jesuit, um, is to, to feel this in your bones as part of this, as part of our history. And so to walk with Georgetown as it confronts this history, but to do it as a Jesuit was intensely meaningful. And then as a professor of government, to think about the structures that enabled this to happen, to think about the, um, the historical um, political factors that underlie it uh, was extremely important to me. I've been teaching a course recently on inequality, and we often come back to issues of race. And there's no way of talking about where we are as a nation today without thinking about our history and about this really painful legacy. So it was extremely important to me to be on this um, uh, working group and to participate in it. The universities have the, the express purpose of thinking deeply about these issues and seeking truth wherever that leads us. Um, others could, um, you could imagine if this was a purely political thing, we'd be looking at the expedient solution. That's not what we're looking at all here. We're really willing to go deep and we're willing to do it in terms of the historical exploration and we're willing to do it in terms of the ethical imp uh, uh, implications of this. And Georgetown is particularly suited on both those fronts. So first, Georgetown is unique in the records we have. There's really, there may not be another university in the country that has the records of the uh, slaves that were sold, the slaves that were owned, and then those that were sold, and we can actually trace this to descendants, and those records were preserved. They were preserved by the Society of Jesus first in their archives, and when those were moved to Georgetown, those became available so that people can search them. That's a record that is unique and allows us to do a kind of inquiry that nobody else can. But the other piece, and this is something that lots of our um, uh, fellow universities have pointed out. You may know there's a consortium kind of of schools that are studying their histories of slaveholding. Um, and they all look at us and say, you know, Georgetown as a Catholic university, um, as a Jesuit university, has a clear ethical perspective on the world. And that grounds it in a responsibility and gives it resources for thinking about um, issues like um, uh, um, reconciliation justice. Um, what does it look like to really heal relationships? Those things out of our ethical perspective actually allow us to approach this in a way that other, other schools might not have that same sort of concentrated set of resources. So I think it was profoundly important that we did it here and are doing it here at Georgetown. You know, I, I hope when people uh, sit down and read the report, they don't skip ahead to the hot button items. And what I hope they do is read it carefully because it really reflects the many, many discussions we had um, uh, through many, many months and hours and hours of meetings. Um, nothing in that uh, document has not been thoroughly uh, considered, reflected upon, um, and, uh, and is still open to further growth. We recognized as we wrote it that if it was a a grappling with these truths, um, but only a grappling. And we'll keep discovering more of the truth of the history, and we'll keep grappling with new ways of responding to it. And in that sense, I hope every generation keeps grappling with this. But that first, you know, that first read, I hope people take it slowly and reflect on parts of it, that talk about you know, the ways we grappled with reconciliation, the ways we grappled with thinking about naming and uh, how names live on um, in a campus, the ways that we uh, um, actually reflect on the interwovenness of um, even some of our heroes in this uh, shameful and sinful history, um, and that ultimately how we challenge Georgetown to keep grappling with these things, not just as an institution, but at an individual level, that every one of us takes this on and owns it. And I think if you read it slowly, and I think if you really take, um, take to heart uh, the reflectiveness of the, uh, of the document, because it's not a short document, it takes, it, it takes some real time to read, um, I think you'll find that it can be a really transformative experience, and one that will hopefully inspire people to want to work harder on this in not just the year that comes, but the next century that comes. My hoping is that this becomes part of our shared history and that it becomes something that we own in, our, in every fiber of our being. Um, we recognize that 
when we see you know, the, the Healy Tower and we see you know, the John Carroll statue, we realize how high we can aim, but we also realize that we are profoundly broken human beings um, in constant need of reconciliation to one another. And this history, if we talk about it well, if we share it with every new generation that comes onto this campus, if we you know, point to the buildings, if we point to the spaces on campus, and we say, this is something that was practiced right here, just as truly as you know, George Washington and Abraham Lincoln stood there on you know, Old North. This is part of our history, and it invites the best of us. It invites an openness to listening, to change, and ultimately to growing in a way that our nation has promised that it will, but still hasn't achieved. And if we as a community can start to confront that and can slowly step by step move forward together, that would be a profound legacy of what we started here.